Hello, welcome. Especially everyone who came over from Old Dave 100, Dave Signs, Dave Roden, Make a Wood Sign. Damn, they got a lot of names. Um, I really appreciate you guys coming over and subscribing. I hope you tell your friends and family about my channel and have them subscribe and share and comment and all that stuff. Um, as you can tell, uh, this channel is quite new. I'm just getting started and I'm not going anywhere soon. So the more uh, more subscribers I get, um, the, the more I can do this. So thanks again. And to show my appreciation, appre appreciation, to show that I appreciate you guys coming over, um, I will be doing a giveaway. It's going on until the end of the year. There will be one winner selected, and that winner and I will discuss uh, creating a custom sign for him, or by me, of course. <laughs> um, the uh, the link for that is in the description. Uh, it's either by itself or it's in my link tree links down below, which links to all of my social media. From there, you can find my Facebook and Instagram pages and some more. Um, along with those is my kit profile. Um, kit is kind of a newer thing out there. Um, at least it is for me anyway. Um, but a lot of makers and creators and YouTubers use it to share their tools and equipment and accessories, supplies, everything that they use. Um, it's up there on that site, well, with, well, what they put up there on that site. Um, and it's linked to products where you can go and buy that stuff. Um, I recently taken the time to update mine and there's quite a bit up there for you guys to, uh, to look at in case you're curious of what equipment or tools I use. So, um, that's it. Uh, getting into this video now. Um, this is a second version of how to make a tiki sign or a distress sign. There's quite a bit more info in this one than the first one. And if you haven't seen the first one, I'll link it onto my end screen. Uh, or in the, I'll put it in the description below. I would suggest you check that one out first. This video was filmed probably four or five months ago. And since that time, I've actually come up with a few more ways of distressing the sign. So there probably will be a third version at some point. Um, but not anytime soon. So I guess that's it. Um, let's get into it. So, in the past, we have made a uh, tiki sign, distressed, uh, weathered look, and while it, it was decent, um, pretty good even, um, you could probably do a little better. Um, so, this is, uh, I guess, version two. Just an overview of the differences um, from the last one. Pretty much everything will be the same, um, except for the the shape that we finalize. Be a little more jaggedy, not really just on the on the edges like we had before, but you know, in here, kind of want to keep this knot though. But it should kind of follow the um, the grain and make some some opening cuts in there. 
Um, and then the other thing is when we took the router and we kind of randomly did little nicks and stuff. This time we're gonna do lines. Um, and that should make it more like it dug out, um, like the water dug out some of the wood. Start off by uh, painting our painting our uh, <clears throat> template here. And again, you don't have to overkill on this. We're not really painting it. We're just we just want to be able to see the edges after we pull up the tape. And I'm gonna pull it up right now. I mean, like I sprayed it on so lightly that it's not really, you know, gonna come off. We can see people see the comments. So that's all we do here. Always wear those safety glasses, kids, even if they're shitty like these. Going to be using this straight edge bit. I don't know if that's what it's called, but I don't care. Probably only going to go. Um, an eighth of an inch, maybe. Maybe, uh... All right, here we go. You may have noticed that uh, my router got a little carried away in the line. Um, it kind of pushed in a little bit, but like that's fine. Um, we are making it a distress, you know, looking sign. It's, it doesn't need to be perfect. That being said, I did try to go back out and strain it a little bit, but you can see this one's not perfect either. Um, after we burn and brush it, it's going to get smoothed out anyway, so no worries. Another thing to note, um, you may see me when I'm tracing, I will come down and then instead of going up, I will move the router back up here and come down. And that's way um, I can always see when I'm looking at it. If I'm going up, I can't necessarily see the line because of the bits blocking it.
tend to draw where I'm going to cut. So this is where the difference comes in. When I first started doing this, um, I did it like this. And for whatever reason, I started not doing this too much. At least not as much. Um, and I mean, as, as into it. And I would usually just do this. And these would be more of a jaggedy edge. It should be more round. And these should come in quite a bit. You just take your saw, your skill saw, scroll saw, come in here. Just make a saw mark. The uh, burning will make it extend out more. Pull it off so I can, you know, cut the lines without affecting anything else underneath. Trust me, the better that this is held down, the easier your cutting will go. Um, I kind of wasn't paying attention when I drew the line, but I, when I'm cutting it, I'm trying to cut where this crack is. As much as I like this crack in here, um, and I'm going to leave it right here, obviously. Um, I'm trying to eliminate most of it because so, I don't want the wood to continue to crack. Um, so if I cut this out, at least it'll get rid of the majority of it. Another thing <clears throat> I've been doing is, um, and you can't really see it, but uh, I take off chunks. Um, <clears throat> I'll show you right here. Taking this on the side. <clears throat> Just takes off a big chunk. We're gonna use the router on the side edges anyway, so, but, yeah. <clears throat> so for this, <clears throat> for this I'm gonna use, um, I think this is a half inch round over. Although it's only gonna, you know, come up probably about an eighth of an inch again. 
a lot of people don't like Ryobi, and I don't know why. I never had any issues at all. So if you're listening to Ryobi, hint, hint, because we're going to go in straight lines. This is a little slippery. I'm going to add one clamp here. Now comes a little torch in time. The only part we probably don't really want to torch is inside that crack. I'm gonna get it just enough to burn it, but that's about it. You can see we really want to get in the grooves that we carved out, wrote it out. Um, and really um, make it black, you know, get it burned. It's gonna get brushed off anyway. The more burned it gets, the better the uh, wire brush will do in smoothing out the edges. Now, of course, um, brushing with the wire brush uh, is also going to remove all the black paint that we put on there.
you know, I'm not worried about this edge being a bigger gap because I'm gonna come back and reroute it out anyway on the edges. Uh, now we should just turn this over. You want to get this from both angles too. And don't worry if you don't torch it enough. Even after you wire brush it, um, you can always just go back and torch it again as many times as you need. Um, the outcome that you're looking for is just a nice smooth edges that, you know, I mean, it's up to you, your, your taste or whatever you want to do. But if you've ever seen a piece of driftwood, it's always got smooth, kind of grayish edges, and that's kind of the feel we're going for. I mean, look up any kind of tiki log or tiki sign. Um, great references are any of the um, tiki signs around Adventureland uh, and Disneyland, you know, um, especially where the Dole Lip is and uh, Chanted uh, Tiki and all that. Um, there's a lot of good reference signs and uh, tiki log carvings and characters um, that you can take a look at, even online. Just do a search. Well, now it's all burned. Just like the prior signs now, we're just gonna wire brush. Um, the end there pretty good. Um, maybe not so hard around the font, but definitely everywhere else. Um, I recommend gloves because it can get dirty. And also wear a face mask. Otherwise, uh, you're going to breathe in all that carbon. Black buggers. Myself a rag. See, it's too big. So I have brushed off everything, but I'm still not completely satisfied. Um, these are a little too square still, so I'm going to cut these um, and maybe take off some more chunks off the edges um, with the scroll saw and uh, maybe a little more with the router. And then we're going to trace the letters again on the outside with a different router bit. Just um, trying to follow the grain a little better. Um, I don't like this part though. This might be kind of tricky. I'm going to turn it over. So I just going to, basically what I was doing is getting rid of the flat edges. Um, just they kind of make it more true, rugged, distressed, whatever. So it doesn't look like it was bought from a store.
you can see on the router you just did. Yep. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to change it out to do around the edges. This little dude should focus. inside of the A. So, because I did um, the router, the second routering with um, a pointed edge, kind of like a 90 degree edge um, on that bit, the line, it made a line basically in the wood, um, kind of around there, and I don't think I'm too happy with that, so I'm going to put in, I think I have like a little rounded edge, um, actually... This is a smaller version of the other one I was using. Uh, this I think is like a two eighths. So that should fit in there and just basically, I'm not gonna go around everything, but just wherever I see the lines.
So definitely taking care of those edges here and here and up here and here. They were the square edges, you know, left over from it being like a two by 12 inch uh, slab of wood. Definitely makes it look more, you know, more realistic, more drift footage. Adding the thicker lines. Um, I can even see probably going back and adding more lines. But I think this is pretty good. Um, I don't know if you can see the lines in there. And that's probably a quarter of an inch. And that could be like a half an inch right here. But, um, yeah. Last thing to do is just to paint the letters. Add some uh, hardware in the back or, you know, places to put in nails, which I have, uh, keyhole bit Definitely needs a second coat, so let me go ahead and start that. Yeah, this paint is definitely giving me a uh, beach vibe. It looks like water. This might need a third coat in some spots, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish this and then touch up any parts that we need that and come back to you when we're done. And there you have it. Until next time. Are you still here? The video is over. But since you're here, want to know a secret? I bought a CNC machine, the Invincibles X Carve, and I got the largest size. Largest size. So you know what that means? More stuff to make. New way of making it. And it's a lot like the files I made for my laser cutter. So I was thinking, what would be the perfect first project to build with the CNC? Now, I know 
know I said I wouldn't make one of these ever again, but I never said I wouldn't make a giant one. Oh yes. Hmm. 16 inches? Yeah. That's gonna happen. Why 16 inches? Well, yeah, that's for another day. See you soon.